is pending before the Clarkstown Town Board, uh, before the, um, the Planning Board. And that is a, a distribution warehouse project. Um, a company called Lincoln Equities, a New Jersey-based company, wants to build a 220,000 square foot warehouse uh, in Valley Cottage at Executive Park. Uh, and the project is pending before the planning board. The application came back this week, and the application remains uh, controversial, which uh, I'll explain as I, as I unroll this. But um, essentially, this is a project that has an as of right, meaning that um, they, they have, you know, the, the zoning is in place for them to build what they want to build, even though this would represent um, a warehouse pretty much double the size of any other uh, in, in most uh, spots in, in the county. Um, but they will need to seek a height variance at some point from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Now that said, um, you know, whether or not Lincoln Equities does get its green light to go through and, and build this project, I would say that residents as well as the board members themselves um, have shown uh, a reticence over this project because the, uh, the giant um, distribution center uh, would be built, although it's in an industrial uh, park, it's surrounded by residential area uh, and also schools and churches um, and, and other uh, things. And also it is um, based basically along Route 303 where it's a one-lane highway in either direction and where it's already a traffic nightmare. And a project like this, which, which includes scores of, of bays and idling trucks, would essentially spill hundreds of diesel trucks onto 303 um, every single day. And, um, you know, whether we agree that this is the right location um, or, or not, and that is um, a decision that the planning board uh, is grappling with, and, and there was another we reported on this last week. There was another sort of marathon meeting where residents spoke about their objections in terms of traffic and, and uh, pollution um, and, and whatnot. But what, whether or not the planning board, like I say, green lights this because uh, you know they don't have enough um, uh, sort of tools to, to hold it back, uh, whether or not they get their variance at the Zoning Board of Appeals, that might be a higher hurdle. Uh, what is uh, true is that these types of warehouses are going to be the future, these new industrial warehouses uh, to uh, deal with the fulfillment for all the products that we all want delivered um, like now. So, um, <laughs> Thank you, Amazon. Yeah, they, well, and we, we have a couple of Amazon uh, warehouses here, but they're, they're really half the size of this, and they're located squarely in the former Bradley Park, uh, which is now called Hudson Crossing. Along, um, also along 303, but not in a residential neighborhood, and where 303 is two lanes and has easy access to Route 59 and the throughway. So, what what I think that this this shows, though, is is um, the, the the story. You know, the bigger story here is what the town um, supervisors and, and what the county, well, what town officials and village officials need to do to think about this problem. Uh, in a futuristic way. If these larger warehouses are going to be some sort of reality, <clears throat> the question becomes, where do they belong? Um, clearly, ideally, they belong where you don't have res residential areas uh, that are not going to be impacted by idling trucks and, and um, you know, particulate matter and pollution and noise and 24-7 operations. But, as Clarkstown has redone its comprehensive plan and Orangetown and Ramapo are in the process of doing their plans, um, what, what I think officials may ultimately be need to be, are, are going to be faced with is some need to create special zones or isolate these kinds of projects into zones you know, where, where they belong, where, where the traffic is not going to you know, turn Rockland County into you know, an industrial byway um, and neighborhoods you know, into places that become, uh, from, a, from a health point of view, um, you know, potentially endangered uh, as, as time marches on. So I think it's a tough balancing act um, because we, you know, we want the rateables. We, we, want, we want to be a business-friendly county. And at the same time, we want to protect the way of life and we want to protect our residents and our health. Um, and we do not want to turn, uh, you know, the roads uh, in, into essentially just, you know, unbearable truck routes. 
So um, it's, you know, it's one project before the Clarkstown Planning Board, but I think it's symbolic of, of, of more that are coming down the, the, the pike, no pun intended, and uh, they, uh, you know, we, we can either look at all, we could, we could do this one project at a time and have, you know, the sort of marathon meetings that go on till 11 o'clock at night at planning boards, uh, or there can be a more comprehensive or more a holistic look at, you know, where do warehouses of this scale, uh, you know, these distribution centers uh, really belong. I mean, you know, Rockland does have a lot of open land for, for warehousing and, um, you know, so we're, we're like Orange County, uh, we're, we're a, um, I don't want to say a target, but we're, we're a, a likely place where, where these distribution centers can be sited, uh, but, you know, while they bring rateables and minimum number of jobs, at the same time they also bring considerations for traffic and environmental issues and, and our health issues. So that's an issue that uh, is on the table and really needs consideration. Uh, that's one thing I wanted to cover mm -hmm. today. And we also, as a county, uh, we're also dealing with Unless you have any questions on that, any comments, any thoughts? Uh, not at this time. But you, you, uh, if you have anything else, you could say that, or or uh, uh, the other thing you were going to bring up. Um. Okay. Yeah. The other thing I'm going to talk about, and t t I also view it sort of as, a, as an existential issue for the county and for many of the players in the county, and that is this ongoing situation around high tour. Now. Tomorrow night, the county, Rockland County Legislature is fully expected to greenlight Rockland Greens, the former, um, the former Rockland County Solid Waste Management Authority's uh, request to ask the New York State for a change of its charter. The authority um, wants to essentially be able to have the option to potentially run uh, or be in charge or be uh, to, to oversee uh, um, High Tour Animal Shelter of Pomona, and they're looking at that uh, option uh, in view of the uh, new shelter that is that eventually, uh, hopefully, will get rebuilt. Uh, will get built uh, the new eight plus million dollar project. And um, for some reason, this agency, um, you know, has come together, has coalesced around this, and has uh, come to the decision that they might be the best agency to take the the um, the shelter into the future. Now, uh, it's an obvious thing to say that they have no experience in animal management, and um, also uh, by Howard Phillips' uh, his own, um, uh, you know, what he has told the, the public, uh, it would require hiring three to five people. So that decision, all of the decisions that, that are around this issue uh, are decisions that are going to impact uh, the animals. They're going to impact High Tour, which is a 50-year-old nonprofit organization uh, that has slogged through the care of animals, uh, you know, in, in pretty dire conditions in a building that has been inadequate for not weeks, months, and, and years, but decades. Um, and thirdly, for taxpayers, because um, it is at the heart of this, it is completely unclear right now what Rockland Green would have in mind and how this would work and how this would impact taxpayers um, if they were to essentially take over the shelter. And um, the kind of chicken and egg thing that's gone on in the last few weeks, if people are paying attention, and we certainly have been reporting on this, is that Rockland Green came to the county legislature to, to ask to change its charter. Uh, they got the green light from a couple of committees. Then there was an effort by some county exec county um, legislators to uh, to ask for more information. Uh, you know, there was there's no details whatsoever. Uh, we thought that, that that was going to happen before it went back to the, the full legislature. But in fact, it is going back to the full legislature without any kind of information, uh, any any sort of detail whatsoever. Uh, the explanation for this is it makes no sense to put forward projections and a business plan until they have their charter change. Um, but uh, in addition to that, about 50 people showed up to Rockland Green's um, last uh, meet, a meeting last week. Rockland Green uh, is an open meeting, and they do have an open comment se section. One. Uh, 
legislator, not one, one, I'm sorry, one official said they've never seen, I don't think, anybody at their meetings, let alone 50 people at a meeting. But anyway, so 50 people came and essentially they were, they were, they, what they want, they want to understand how this would work. What is Rosalind Green's idea about how this would work? So many questions mm -hmm. over the employees, over, you know, where is, where does the board of high tour fit into this? Uh, you know, who makes these decisions? What's the budget? How will it impact taxpayers? Right now we have zero answers. We only have a, a sketchy uh, vision, which is to say it's an option, uh, and that and, and the sort of the ongoing narrative that, you know, high tour needs to be rescued like this. And I will just say I'm going to add my own two cents and uh, to wrap up here, okay? Mm -hmm. I would say that um, nobody would disagree that we do have an existential problem. And, in fact, I'm going to say I don't see why we have to wait until this new shelter is built to solve this existential problem. I think that Rockland County, and these, this is my opinion, I think that Rockland County should uh, hire an independent consultant to, exam to examine and study high tour, its strengths, its weaknesses, um, you know, whether or not it can continue as it, as it grows into um, this new shelter when it's built. I mean, maybe we're looking at two years out for all we know. Who knows? Um, but that, that, that if Rockland Green, I'm sorry, if High Tour needs to be a more professional organization, and I believe that it does need to be a more professional organization, mm -hmm. and the county needs to hire some, uh, an independent consultant to recommend some ideas of, of how other shelters around the, the country uh, do this and, and, and possibilities, you know, with funding and, and how this might look before, um, you know, b before anything more dramatic uh, is done. So it, it's, I think that, that an independent consultant would, would take some of the, um, uh, I, I don't know, I, th I think it would burst the bubble of the tension that is, that is existing right now, and, and it would allow people to take a breath and, and rely on, you know, some experts to try to outline what a, what a feasible future could be with the consideration of um, all the skin that, that, that the nonprofit has had in the game, uh, all the weaknesses that have, that have been shown, uh, but also to evaluate whether or not, you know, a, 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 a public authority like Rockland Green you know, is best suited to take over the shelter. I think it's a very, very complicated issue, and um, I've done some very extensive reporting on this, and I think the problem is is that, um, you know, people have some very broad brush impressions, and that there's, that, that although we're trying to really educate the public on this, and we have a new story posted today on this, I, I still think that we need an independent consultant to come in and, and lay this out for us as a county, and and offer some roadmaps <clears throat> before, um, b you know, b before we make, uh, you know, just more bad decisions about, about how to care for the animals here. Right. And we do value your input on the, the story and your uh, fantastic reporting on the situation as it unfolds. Thank you so much, Tina Traster from the Rockland County Business Journal, for joining us as you do every Monday morning at this time. If you want more information, of course, you can go to their website, rcbiz, that's B-I-Z, rcbizjournal.com, or go to their Facebook page, uh, Rockland County Business Journal. And uh, we will talk to you next week. Have a great week. Have you too, guys. Have a great week. Bye.